My brothers and sisters, friends of all, on behalf of Mrs. McDonald, I share with the family and to my mother drugs and her daughter how deeply moved we are even as I make my stance here to let you know that we are praying with you and I thought that mere words of condemnation are not enough to assuage the grief that you are carrying. The truth is, since the death of Brother Edwards, I have been a troubled man. It must be made known that upon our arrival here in this parish to serve God's people, one of the many persons who greeted us and stood with us and ensured that life a 24 box haven where we reside remains meaningful. If there is anyone who will champion the cause of our safety, security, and well being of the pastor, is uh, that character, that man that I have lost. All of that were said concerning him is already chronicled in heaven because of the truth. And we pray that his soul will rest in peace. And if it is that his life, his legacy, should be lived out, it must be lived out by the brothers who have been called to live in community and live lives in such a way that suffering is exemplary. And therefore, I'm here to allow the scripture to speak to us. The letter, according to Romans chapter 8, that was read by Mrs. Chenner, to speak to us at the time as God's people struggle to deal with this reality. And as I come through this letter again, and especially this chapter, I could not help but glean some truth from it pertaining to the constancy and the certainty of God's love despite the crisis. And so that is what I seek to do for us through the enabling of the Holy Spirit so that God's people gather here today will not lose sight, once again, of the constancy and the certainty of God's amazing love for Jesus Christ, despite the crisis that we face. I tell you this one more time. Mr. God, we have with us your word. And we pray that as your servants and all of us seek to gaze again upon your word, seek to understand your word, that may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts find acceptance in you, O Lord, our redeeming friend in God's name. Amen. Amen indeed. Each day we are greeted with bad news. But each day that we live our lives, we are graced with the good news. Each day that we live and move and have our beings in this world, we are greeted with some form of bad news. But if we are careful to know 
note. We will recognize that each passing day we are graced with the good news that is enveloped in the library of 66 books. We are praised with the good news of that